<laughs> well, we've had these conversations for like a decade. Oh, so. yeah. It's just nobody, uh, thousands of people never Fun. listened to them before. So. <laughs> well, that's right. They couldn't hear all the. We probably had a lot of really good gems uh, a few years ago in our three-hour conversation. Well, well, now, how many people are going to listen to this one, Coach Mike? Quite a few. I don't know. Last week, we had double the numbers from the week before. I think we had yep. a couple thousand. That's yep. awesome. So all those people that's get just to hear on Matt the one media. Everybody get to have Matt get his butt whooped, but that's all right. All right. Um, real quick, <laughs> uh, Chris, you got any final words? No, I just appreciate you having us on to participate in this challenge, and I look forward to the upcoming future that Alan and I will have, you know, when we have our show, hopefully debuting in the next couple of weeks on your network. Look forward to it, and I appreciate the opportunity. All right. Now, Alan, I know that Chris sent me a link to a book you wrote. You want to tell us a little bit about it and where we can find it at? Yeah, Mike, thanks. I um, uh, I don't know if, as you know, I've been uh, coaching. I coached youth sports for a long, long time, and then middle school and, and high school basketball. And um, what I've seen along the way there's an awful lot of coaches that are leaving an awful lot of good opportunities for kids uh, on the table, so to speak. And so what I did, I wrote a book that hopefully will benefit every kid who participates in team sports, but it's directed at the coaches. Um, it's titled uh, Be the Ultimate Sports Coach, and then it's got a subtitle to it. But what, I'm, what I did was I took my experience. What I and I, by the way, I don't address pro or college whatsoever because that's a whole different ball game, whole different business. But everything that I have done, seen, uh, whether it's high school coaches that I've watched or, or experiences I've had myself, and I put together a series of uh, vignettes, if you will, um, of coaching situations, how I handled them, how I, um, uh, in some cases, how I watched them be handled, and there are good examples and bad examples. But it's ultimately designed to help coaches figure out the best way of getting the best potential out of your players. With, I mean, and there are many different ways of doing that. I don't advocate um, one approach over the other. Like, I don't go in there and say, well, gee, coach, you shouldn't yell at your players. I don't care. if Whatever your style is, that. But your main uh, priority ought to be coaching from the kids up, not from your resume down. And an awful lot of coaches I've seen, they're, they're, they're more uh, wrapped up in themselves and how to get the best resume rather than getting the best out of their kids. And ironically, if you can push each kid to the best of their potential, you know, from the bottom all the way up, your resume is going to work, work out to be the best. But, uh, you know, it's just a matter of um, reaching the kids better and uh, hopefully, and plus, by the way, if you look at it, Youth coaches, in most cases, are simply volunteers, and they, in some ca- sometimes they don't have any experience at all. They, but they realize this team needs a coach. I'll step up and do, and you know, spend the time. Other times, they're guys that have been doing it for years and years and years. So they're locked into the same old grind, and they don't realize uh, that there are a lot of better techniques out there that they're not using. And uh, and I'm not saying I didn't. I'm not saying that I'm the greatest coach in the history of the world. I used my experiences and other coaches' experiences, uh, and I put them all together. And um, I say this this book is like a um, – think of it like a cookbook. When you read a cookbook, some recipes you're going to use exactly as they say because it's perfect for you. Others, you're going to look at them and say, well, I can temper this for my situation. It'll be okay. It'll be really good. And then still others, you'll have your own ideas from what you've read here. And you can find the book. It's on Amazon. Um, You can either find it just under my name, Alan Buck, and then go through about two pages of Milwaukee Bucks books before you come to mine. But it's it's titled uh, Be the Ultimate Sports Coach. Uh, You could also go to – I'm a writer. You could go to my website, mastergrammar.com. It's all one word, mastergrammar.com. Scroll down, and you'll see a little blurb about the book, and there's a there's a button a, a link a link will take you right over to Amazon. Yeah, if you go to at Grueling Truth, we will actually retweet that occasionally over the next few days too. So maybe we can catch some people's eye like super. that also. Super. And Mike, I had I, I had you know when you do something like this, I had these questions in my mind: Is there really a need for this, or is it just my own imagination? I ran into a guy I used to coach against at a at a basketball game last fall. 
And I told him about it, and I said, I'm not telling you to promote the book. I'm telling you because you're in it. And and I, I went on to say, I'm not saying if you hand this to the best coach here in town that tomorrow he's going to be a better coach, but I am saying that everything that's in here, coaches, whether they're experienced or inexperienced, will not disagree with anything that I have in here. And he interrupted me, and he said, then why don't they coach that way? And I said, yeah. So, Coach Allen, I had a question for you, if I, if I may, please. I, I think that's just please. a fantastic idea. And uh, I love how you make this not about college or the, or the pros. And I've got right. a suggestion, a humble suggestion for you for the follow-up, which, sure. is, uh, which has to do with being a parent. Same thing because, I was thinking, Eric. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know you would. I mean, and, that, and that's for everyone who's listening to. This would be the obvious thing to, uh, to jump on and ask, uh, and ask uh, Coach Allen here to, uh, to do it because there's a lot of parents that are not coaches, won't be coaches, can't be coaches, right. and whose <laughs> kids are not into sports, and they are probably the majority. But everybody mm-hmm. understands the power of what you talk about, and because they're not in the grind as they, as it were, they would mm-hmm. never think to, they would never know that something like this was there for them. Right. So somehow, if you were to package this in the next version, and uh, and put it forth in the context of parenting, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, uh, as a parent, and as just about I think everybody on this call. Um, you know, you would have a, a remarkable response to it. I, I think that's just a great idea and a great thing that you've hit upon. Thank well, you, Yeah, And I think parents and coaches, Alan, I don't know what you think, but I think they have the same problem a little bit. I mean, a Absolutely. lot of these coaches get their self-worth from whether their team's winning or losing, and a lot of these parents get their self-worth about how well their kid is playing. Exactly. I, I address that in several different examples and things that uh, – uh, uh, yeah, I've seen. Well, we've all seen in youth basketball leagues, for instance, the one kid who can just zip up and down the court and dribble circles around everybody, and his team, you know, his coach makes sure that kid does everything so his team wins all the games. Well, I, I use that as and really develop that as a big example in the, in the book. That, that it's a how not to chapter, by the way. But um, you know, in, in the net result of it is nobody learns anything. You know, the kids that are staying out of the way don't learn anything. The kid that's running around like a, like a chicken with his head cut off, he doesn't really learn anything either because as he gets older and other kids learn things like passing and defense, this kid never learns any of that because he was allowed to do what he was allowed to do by the coach who had to have a lot of wins on his resume, uh, you know, in youth leagues. And so, yeah, I do address those kind of things. In fact, one of the things I compare this this book, writing this book, was similar to writing a book on marriage or raising children because there's no exact thing on, you know, there's no exact ABC's uh, guideline to any of it. It's a very imperfect kind of a thing. It's just more the attitudes and how you develop those and how you get things out of there, uh, get the right approach out of the kids. Um, you know, I I had I had a kid one time, this is youth league football, he was a fullback and um, really a hard-hitting, good runner. You know, we needed the short yards, we'd get them. Well, we were going into the championship game, and this this opponent had a really good linebacker. He was He was – We'd open huge holes in the line, but he was so fast he would get there and make the tackles. We played this team already in the in, you know in the season, and I knew what was what to expect. So I pulled this fullback aside before the last week of practice, and I sat him down. And I said, "Son, I said, uh, and by the way, this other linebacker's name was uh, Merriweather." And I said this, told this kid, "I said, uh, you've done a good job running the ball all season, but on Saturday you're not going to be carrying the ball." because I've got a special assignment for you. And he looks up at me, and he grins, and he said, Merriweather? And I said, yep, that was it. He, he had learned throughout the season it was a team game. It's, it's do the job, you know, do the job that's best for the team, not what you want to do. And here's a running back. He's just as eager as heck to give up his carries so he can help the team win. And we proceeded to put him in the spot where he would go through the hole first on every play and – find Merriweather and hit him. And uh, kid pitched a shutout that day. Merriweather had zero tackles. But the fact is that he was eager to accept a challenge and give up his opportunity to carry the ball, that was an attitude type of a thing that was developed, and, and it's 
really kind of fun. It was it was kind of neat to see from a kid like that. He was pretty young. You can you can couch all of these examples from the parenting point of view. And again, there is no parent that doesn't understand the power of sports and the value of sports. But for many parents, in fact, for most parents, there's just not an outlet, either because yep. of themselves and their backgrounds, or because of their kids and their kids' ability, no matter how good the intention is. That's so, so you packaging these stories and extending, you know, extrapolating them, if, if you like, and and it's it, you're doing everybody a service. You know, you're adding to a commentary that needs to be, you know, that that needs this. So it's. Uh, now, kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, yeah, I'm uh, working on ideas for a follow-up, and um, you've given me a real good idea for better direction. Oh, this is not open to debate. I mean, you're, you've got to go on air right now. <laughs> yeah, you have to do what Eris says. This is Eris' show. Uh, I mean, <laughs> right. if you don't do what Eris says, then you're never allowed back on the show. Let me get my pen out. I'll write these down. Man. Everybody listens to Eris. If you don't listen to Eris, we've learned you're just nuts. There you go. Right. Well, Eris knows it. best. Don't you remember that show back in the 50s? <laughs> We're going to be launching it now, won't we? Yeah. Well, there may be a new show. We'll start it tomorrow night. Eris knows best. <laughs> so make sure you get out. Check out Alan's book on Amazon. Matt, you got any final words? Yeah, the Chris and Alan, uh, thank you guys for uh, coming on tonight. Uh, <clears throat> Alan, I appreciate uh, everything you said about your book. sounds really great. Thanks, We're happy Matt. to promote it and uh, hope to have you guys back on. Mike, congrats on your win tonight. I hope to uh, play a little better next week and hopefully, uh, hopefully win next week. I'm sorry, you're never going to win again. Eris. <laughs> what I was going to say is, Matt, who are you, and what have you done with a real Matt? That's what I. Mean. I know he's usually arrogant and cocky. <laughs> now he gets knocked down a peg or two, and all of a sudden he's going to be oh, humble. <laughs> Thanks, that? Eris. That's nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> that is not in Alan's book. I'm telling you. <laughs> Maybe Alan no. needs to write a book about the mind of Matt. You know, <laughs> and arrogance, <laughs> cockiness, stuff like that, and how it can affect you and cause you to lose miserably in front of thousands of people. Well, I could give that a shot, but I would well, have to be... Well, I don't remember saying that, but okay. <laughs> Play along, Matt. It's all right. My, my goodness, that would be scary. <laughs> so, final hey, words there. Day. Hey, I'll say the same thing I sign off with every, every broadcast. I'll just say good night to all good sports. Good okay. night, everybody. So. Thank you. Hey, guys, make sure that we check out thegruelingtruth.net. Um, check out our shows the rest of the week. Tomorrow I'll have former University of Kentucky head football coach, father of the air raid offense, Hal Mummy. Tomorrow night our boxing show. We're going to have a special boxing show with welterweight contender from Australia, Jeff Horn. After that, we will break down the heavyweight title fight this weekend between Deontay Wilder and Alexander Povetkin in Russia with former heavyweight contender Peter McNeely. Um, Friday, we will have former Dallas Cowboy great defensive end James Jeffcoat. Um, later on in the afternoon, we'll have Jeff Severson, who was the starting safety for the Washington Redskins in Super Bowl VII. Also was in North Dallas 40, the best of times, a bunch of different movies. And then Friday night, we'll have another edition of Mike and Aaron Sports World. Next week, we got some big guests planned. I think Kenny Anderson will be on sometime in the next two weeks. Um, like I said, check out GridRMO at www.gridironmo.com. Um, you can catch us on iTunes, Google Play, Spreaker, Stitcher, pretty much anywhere they've got podcasts. You'll find us. So make sure you check that out. So for Alan Buck, Chris Cook, Matt Andrew Scavage, Eris Presidius, I'm my good pastor. You've been listening to The Grueling Truth, where the legends speak.